So these were things back when I was a kid. How many of you guys remember this? Do you remember Pogs? Slammers, do you remember these things? We got them in metal, we got them in plastic. These were the um, main things. Now these things came, every single one was unique usually. Plethora of different options here. And they, they and they're really good artwork. And it's a game, and, and the game is pretty damn simple. You, know, you get a you get your buddies together, and you all, like, you know, you say, yeah, well, everybody chips in ten of pogs or whatever. It's like gambling, really. You put them in the middle. You know, you get your uh, slammer of whatever kind. This is where you find the rich from the poor there, and you, uh, you try to flip them. You flip them the other side, they're yours. You play them for keeps, or... I never played it for keeps. Some people did though, and that I do remember lots of people getting angry because of that. Came in all kinds of neat cases. Bigger ones. I got another bigger one somewhere else. Just, you know, smaller ones. And you can spend a lot of money on this shit. Look at this sucker here. This sucker. This was like 30 bucks. This is like solid copper. This thing weighs a ton. Amazing. And it really, it wasn't. It was really only good in specific circumstances, too. It's not like the bigger the better. It's not, not, not always the case. I had a lot of fun with this one. This one's a. Another This one cost like 15 bucks, but this one had like a nice like way to grip it to throw them down. I used this one a lot. I think my primary weapon was this, uh copper uh, eight ball one. I think this one, this one was just like the perfect size to get most of them. But I had several other ones. This one's a metal one and this one was good for smaller sizes. I even had a bunch of plastic ones. I, this was my very first slammer that I got. The origins of this game are a little shrouded in mystery, or at least there's a lot of bullshit surrounding it anyway. Uh, when I was a kid, and these things were popular in, from like 1994 to 1995, really. Like, really, that's all they were popular for. It did spread. Like, it did spread across age groups of that era. My sister had them. She seemed to think that these things were around, you know, back in my, in my parents' days, back in the 50s, 60s. And uh, she called them... They called them milk caps, apparently. <laughs> that was the name of it. And the reason they were called milk caps was because uh, you would get them I don't, through the, I don't, when they delivered the milk or something. It was something to do with that. That's what, you know. The milk caps name has survived, even to this day. Like, they do call, sometimes they call pogs milk caps. But I have not found any actual evidence to suggest they were ever truly called milk caps. So digging online, I did find out that it might it might date back to like the 1920s in Hawaii, but really no, it it, it, it might have, but it, it's not like it it went anywhere. It didn't go anywhere from Hawaii. That was the end. Uh, well, my sister was talking about oh, it used to be back in the day they used to have it. No, no, she was talking about 50s, 60s, or whatever. She was talking about our parents. They were not around. They were not a thing back then. And that was a thing that, it wasn't just my sister. I mean, this like persisted throughout the playground. Like this, this was the history of Pogs. It was back in the day our parents used to play them. No, no they didn't. None of them did. I don't know. I don't know how that rumor got started, but it was a persistent one. And the, like people will say, oh, that was popular in the eighties or something. No. No! Everybody, like, they seem to have, like, a different time period for when these things became a thing. And no, they really were only a thing in the early 90s. It was a very quick fad. And we were all about them for a very small period of time, for a couple of years. We were all about them. We, I even, like, I couldn't find Pogs 
nearby locally, and uh, we actually went to a mall, a shitty mall. It was called Universal Mall, I think. Yeah, it was in Sterling Heights, maybe. This was this was one of the first malls way back in the '60s, and I I really hate malls. But I really hate malls and the whole history of destroying you know downtown areas in America. They're they're really really truly terrible thing for this country. But Universal Mall was one of the first ones, and I guess it looked okay back then. Oh, I see pictures of it. Just the same as I remember it. <laughs> Apparently, people just thought that looked good back then. <laughs> but by the 90s, Universal Mall was in ruins. It looked terrible. It, yeah, think of the scene from the Blues Brothers movie where they're just tearing up the mall. And that was a mall that was built and it was actually never used, I guess. The, the mall they used. And it looked very similar to this one. It's just so dark, so dank. So fluorescent lit, so, so terrible, like cement floors or whatever. If this was not what we were used to. If we went to a mall and it had like marble floors and stuff is what we were used to. This place, cement floors, it looked terrible. <laughs> there was this place at Universal Mall. It was so cheap at the theater there. It was a dollar theater, you know. <laughs> That's how cheap it was. And long, long after the uh, theater, Long after the mall closed, the theater actually hung on. It might even still be there. Uh, the, this one place I remember had all these pogs. Like, like there was this one dealer in the middle of the mall area, you know, like a kiosk kind of, you know, thing, a bazaar or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, but that was like the only place I remember ever getting them from. <laughs> so, so we all go to Universal Mall, buy these pogs, and. Bring them back home and play with our friends, our neighbors. We take them to school. They did not like them at school. <laughs> Teachers did not like these things. So I, re I rarely brought them to school, but occasionally I did. Normally I just played with my neighbors. It was such, such a huge deal for that small time period, like 1994, 1995. Gone. It's definitely... One of those fads, and it never, never came back. But it's more fun than the Tamagotchi, really, and the Tamagotchi still lives on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, a virtual pet, you know, just it's a useless piece of junk. And Pogs is an actual game, and it's kind of a gambling game. Like it's a, it's a child gambling game. You, think it would be more taboo you think it would have you know stuck around a little longer but no just two years done I wanted to take a look at them I want to take some of these out take a look at them for you guys let's play the game a little bit let's see how it goes let's see if it's still fun let's see if you guys like it I don't know I don't know if it was a thing in Europe I think it was an American thing, pretty much. And tell me if all of you over the pond uh, might have liked this as a kid, or if you think it's rubbish. Let's take a look. Yeah, so let's take a look at the pogs. This was the first case I ever got. This this little tiny pink one. This came with a handful of them. It also came with this slammer. First guy, you probably actually want to put them upside down so you don't damage anything while you're using them. They usually have grips on the slammer. Yeah, that's pretty much all you do. Ugh. And we miss. God damn. And you slam them. And I flipped over all of these. I only got one that I did not flip over. If you were playing for keeps, these would be mine now. And I think it's. I think it. Re does it remain? I don't know. It, does. it goes to the next person after that, so they get. They get a chance. They do it. Whatever, then it goes to them. Again. Now, say he had a bunch of them. Now, you got a bunch of them. And he'd chip in some. You'd throw in some. Bigger pile like that, we're going to want something bigger. We're going to take this eight ball slammer made of copper. We're going to try this one. Did it pretty damn hard there. <laughs> 
there, there are techniques you got to remember for some of these things. I only got a few of them. Most of them just, yeah, went flying. You got to remember, if there's a specific technique for these things, I don't know. You got to get it groove. When you play it a lot, you, you start to remember exactly how you want to hit it with each slammer. I don't seem to remember how to hit it with each slammer. <laughs> This one was my favorite, so there we go. There's all of them. These things were so big that major, like, corporations and things were, you know, like, slapping their logos on them. So here's Star Theater. Love, Laugh, Live, Larger Than Life, Star Theater. Like, like, yeah, these were, like, advertising vehicles. Everybody would get them, and normally they just have, like, really cool drawings and things. Let me give you a close-up of all that. Throw some out here. Look at all that shit. This one's a Star Theater Slammer, which... It's made of a very peculiar uh, material. I don't know. It's not plastic. It's not metal. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Very peculiar. It doesn't seem to be very good. Maybe for small ones. All kinds of slammers. And yeah, usually, you, you got your favorite ones, usually. Got some plastic ones. Plastic ones can be good, on occasion. These, these plastic ones I never use. They, didn't, they never seem to be good for anything. Lots of slammers, lots of shit. Let's get to the main attraction though. Here's a fifty, a fifteen dollar copper slammer. Just throw them all on there. Why not? <laughs> See, and then you blast it. You blast it with this thing. Boom! <laughs> they go flying all over the place. <laughs> Let's put the monster out, huh? Let's see what the monster does. Here's the monster with a little three D image on it. This one weighs a lot. This one only costs thirty dollars. Yeah, this was the main weapon, you know, and uh, I don't think anybody else had one this big. I don't think they could convince their parents to buy them. I managed to convince them to buy this sucker for me, and because I remember when I had this one, and this one was fucking awesome. And then somebody bought one a little bigger than this. I was like, oh fuck you, take this. <laughs> Oh, wow, it's everywhere. Oh, that's fun, though. It's fun. I, I think this would still be a fun game to play with a friend. Even, even at 30 years of age, if I could manage to find a friend that was nerdy enough to want to play, I think we could have some fun. I think this stuff still holds up today. It's, it's really surprising that it only lasted a year or two, and then it was just gone. It was, a, by all definitions, a fad. It was there and it was gone. I kept a hold of them though through the years. And it never became a thing again, but yeah, I, I wonder what these things are going for on eBay. Probably zilch. <laughs> this has got to be some money in pure copper though. Man, this is, I can't believe that. But yeah, this, this is still a fun game. Let me know what you guys think of it. There'll be lots more of these coming up eventually. Check out my gaming memories and review playlist. Uh, go through old games and uh, reminisce about them. Show you, show them off to you. Finally, if you want to see some of that retro goodness in action, check out my Super 8 film playlist. Oh, I adore them. I adore them. I adore those things. I wish they got more videos, but uh, comment, like, subscribe. See you all later. Goodbye.